Imagine swimming out to a castle which hovers upon an ice-cold Scottish loch. When you emerge from the water, you're invigorated and refreshed, alive to nature around you. Later, bundled into a cosy Shetland jumper, you curry in by a wood-burning stove, a hearty bowl of your favourite soup on the table. This is The Art of Curry, as coined by Gabriella Bennett, and it has been described sometimes as the Scottish version of Huga. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk a wee bit about the definition of Curry. Uh, I'm gonna talk about some of the similarities and differences with Huga, and then I'm gonna wind up by giving you a list of Curry activities for you to try yourself. Now, if you look up the word Curry in a Scots dictionary, you will find words such as cringing and cowering. Personally, I don't know how up to date this definition is. I have only ever used the word curry as a Scot who uses Scots vocabulary to mean to snuggle in or to kind of like get yourself comfy in a wee spot. And for me personally, it has connotations of safety and security and comfort. It has only been in very recent years that it started to be used more as a noun to describe a lifestyle trend as opposed to uh, just the verb to curry or to curry in is what we would normally say. Uh, and so it has received some criticism as being just kind of trying to jump on the bandwagon of the hygge trend, which is fair enough. Hookah as a concept I think does have a lot more longevity than the more recent concept and idea of Kuri in Scotland. However, it is a trend that has been very popular uh, and I do think it has enough differences to Hookah to uh, not be considered purely just jumping on the bandwagon. So one of my favourite definitions of Kuri as explained by Beth Pearson in her book on the art of a curie home um, is that curie is not a concept dependent on class or wealth. It is a lived experience available to everyone who would like to adopt it as their own. I love how the word curie feels easy for natives and non-natives to pronounce, both sounding pleasingly Scottish when doing so. Curie also reflects the Scottish tendency to keep busy while at the same time finding a quiet moment to sit with a cup of tea. It can be a way to be cosy and ambitious within the same space. And for me, the idea of Kuri living favours the indoors and the outdoors equally, ultimately seeking to make the most of what comes from Scotland and aiming to be satisfied too with what already exists around you. And so I'm going to get onto this a wee bit more later on, but I think a key thing at the centre of Kuri is this idea of welcome and hospitality and creating warm spaces. So. How is Kuri similar to Hygge? So I would say it's similar to Hygge in the sense that it has connotations of snuggling, um, you know, curying in, um, which really kind of gives you these ideas of cosy blankets and jumpers and getting really comfy. So that's a really big thing, similar to Hygge. The other main similarity, which interestingly, Gabriella Bennett describes as a difference, but I personally think is actually really similar, um, is the balance between the outdoors and the indoors. Uh, so examples of this would be going wild swimming and then coming inside to really enjoy a cosy cup of tea by the fire. I do think that this is probably just as much the case uh, for the Scandinavians uh, and I do think this is probably a massive thing for their concept of hygge as well. Uh, so this is definitely a similarity for me. How then is Kuri different to Hygge? What I would say is that though the feeling of warmth and comfort is the same, the cultural expression of it is a wee bit different. The best way that I can kind of describe this um, is to say that while Hygge to me feels very uh, comforting and cosy and quite calming in nature, Kuri feels a lot more hearty, if that makes sense. There's a little bit of gumption in there as well. Um, and there is no better way for me to explain this uh, than to jump right into talking about potential Kuri activities that you can try. Okay, number one, which I've already mentioned, I mention it a lot on this channel, is wild swimming. Uh, 
This is one of my favourites, getting immersed in cold water uh, and then coming out. I think with Huga, it would involve then going into a sauna afterwards. Uh, saunas aren't really that big a thing in Scotland, so you'd be more likely to go down to the pub and uh, have a drink or yeah, just kind of go into a cosy place and really relax afterwards. Number two, which I already touched on there, is to go for a hearty meal at a pub. We have many really warm and friendly family pubs in Scotland. We do also have some wild ones. I'm not gonna lie, I'm from Glasgow. There are some wild pubs around here. But we also have, particularly in the countryside, very cosy and welcoming traditional pubs, which are always a real pleasure to get a good home cooked meal in and there's usually a cozy fire to sit by as well which is the perfect thing after number three which is to go for a hike up in the mountains. Probably bring along with you a nice flask of something and provided that the view isn't too awful at the top then you can sit at the top have a nice hot drink and enjoy that. So a couple of months ago I had some friends come over uh, from Austria and we went for a hike. Uh, they were hoping to see some good Scottish nature and they saw some Scottish nature by which I mean it was pretty much a snowstorm the entire time of our hike. There was no view at the top, it was completely white mist uh, and the view was the snow basically. Um, so that's an example of Kuri for me. Uh, because especially afterwards you feel as though you've kind of achieved something you've gone for this hike you've done this difficult thing and you did it even though there wasn't necessarily going to be an obvious reward at the end of it you got just the sheer satisfaction of being outside and there's also a bit of an acceptance of nature is as nature is and it's not going to stop you from doing what you want to do and enjoying the things that you want to do even if it's rainy or even if it's snowing. Okay, this is just an aside. I need to pop in here to say if you're going for a hike in Scotland, uh, please do go with a guide if it's wild weather. And make sure or make sure you've got the right equipment. Uh, I don't want to be <laughs> endorsing uh, unsafe hiking practices. Absolutely make sure you've got the right equipment. Uh, and if it is really, really bad weather, do not go or go for an easier hike. Uh, I just wanted to pop in and say that. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the video. The next thing is to go to a Cayley. This is a very hearty Scottish thing to do. Um, so Cayley, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is subscribed as Scottish country dancing, but I feel like that doesn't encapsulate the whole spirit of it. Uh, it's usually a bit of a rammy, it's usually quite wild. Um, basically folks throwing each other around the room. The saying goes that if you don't have bruises at the end of a Cayley then it wasn't a good one. It's always a great atmosphere, it's always very welcoming, uh, the music is always beautiful and fantastic and upbeat uh, and usually there's a caller as well who will call out the steps so even if you're new to it uh, it's a very welcoming environment for you uh, and it's just a bit of fun, it's a bit of a laugh. Okay what's next? Let's see. Let's calm down now into a slightly calmer Kuri activity, which would be to read old Scottish poetry or perhaps some modern Scottish crime fiction in an old library or bookshop. Now this kind of draws on the idea of Kuri in the sense of um, celebrating Scottish culture. There is so much great Scottish literature out there, uh, it's definitely something I want to prioritise reading more this year. If you want any recommendations, hang on. I recently, well, a few months ago read this book which I really really liked, The Way of All Flesh, which is a crime novel set in Victorian Edinburgh, which is basically a medical student and a plucky maid um, team up to solve these mysterious murders that have started to crop up in their area. It, very excellent, would definitely recommend it. To continue the theme of Scottish culture and promoting Scottish culture, uh, I would definitely recommend visiting a Scottish arts festival or a maker's market. 
uh, particularly in seaside towns. Uh, one of my favourite is the Pitamween Art Festival, which is on the east coast of Scotland. Uh, and that's amazing. Basically, everyone in the village, or a lot of people in the village, opens their home and turns their homes into art galleries, basically. And it's so amazing to see how many creative folks there are in Scotland, even those who maybe don't do it for a living but are as a hobby. Makers markets are also a really great place to find a homemade, um, what's the word? Yeah, homemade goods for the home. What do you call that? You know, things like candles and soaps and things for the home that are made locally. Uh, Scotland's a really great place for that, for a sustainable kind of goods. And that links us very nicely on to decorating your home, um, taking inspiration from Scottish traditions. Um, so if you go to a traditional Scottish inn, you'll often see quite a bit of tartan. I don't know why I'm showing you this, you almost certainly know what tartan is. But uh, you'll see a bit of tartan, um, you'll also see a lot of uh, nature inspired and wildlife inspired decor. Uh, so usually pictures of stags and deer and hares and lots of bird life. Number eight is to go to a whiskey tasting session. I have not done this personally, but I have recently got more interested in whiskey, uh, particularly um, the history behind different distilleries and how they're made, um, because it's different all across Scotland. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's actually a really good way to learn about local culture as well. The next curie activity is to learn to make some kind of traditional Scottish food, um, either something sweet like shortbread or something a wee bit more hearty like a scotch broth. While we're on the theme of food, I have to recommend as a very Scottish activity to get yourself fish and chips and watch the sunset at the beach even when it's freezing cold. It doesn't matter how cold it is, you will shiver your way through that sunset on principle. But it always makes going back inside that much cosier in the end. That's the last activity I've got to share with you. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this video and my kind of take on uh, the concept of kuri. Um, it's something I've really been enjoying looking into recently. If you like the video, like the video. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I make a lot of content of this kind, uh, kind of Scottish lifestyle, cosy, homey kind of content. Do also let me know in the comments uh, what your favourite curry activity is that you would like to try or that you have tried and most enjoy. I love interacting with you down in the comments, so do let me know. I think that's us. Until next time, it was lovely to have you here.